In the greatest inner city rivalry the college sports has to offer, there's never been a greater football game played than that on November the 18th, 1967. In 1965, SC led UCLA 16 to six late in the contest as Mike Garrett and company dominated the Bruins for three quarters. However, SC turned the ball over five times as the Bruins came back to shock the Trojans. We felt we had fairly well put the Bruins away that afternoon and, and I think probably halfway or at least a third of the way into the fourth quarter. We were pretty sure we were on a roll and that roll was also gonna take us to the Rose Bowl. We took for granted our position. Uh, we never really took for granted our position in, in the field. That was a lesson I think a lot of us learned. First, following a Troy fumble, sophomore quarterback Gary Beban found Dick Witcher. Then the Bruins recovered an onside kick, and Beban struck again, this time to Kurt Altenberg. I remember dropping back on a weak side zone and dropping back and seeing the ball going into the end zone, and that's very vivid in my mind. Uh, it was a gray November day, a classic, you know, one of those things, uh, memories that will last you a lifetime. Although Mike Garrett won the Heisman Trophy, the Trojans lost out on Garrett's last chance to take a trip to Pasadena. It would be the last time until 1993 that the Bruins would beat USC when the Rose Bowl berth would be denied the Trojans with a loss to their crosstown rivals. In 66, one would have thought the Trojans would be out for some mighty revenge, and things looked good when Beban was announced as being out of action with a bum ankle, or so it seemed for USC. But reserve quarterback Norman Dow came on to lead UCLA to an improbable 14-7 win. This time, however, the conference held a vote to decide its representative in the Rose Bowl and elected USC anyway. The vote results were discovered by the Bruins faithful as they were celebrating the win and their supposed trip to Pasadena at a pep rally. And that brings us to 1967, arguably the most important football game played in USC history because it came against UCLA. It meant the city championship, the conference championship, a trip to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, and ultimately the national championship. And add to that, two men were vying for the same Heisman Trophy on this day. The great Los Angeles Times sports columnist Jim Murray stated in his inimitable fashion, everything but French Equatorial Africa and the Republican presidential nomination were on the line. An amazing afternoon to be sure. The Bruins opened the season ranked number eight in the nation, won their first six games to move to number two before whipping Washington 48-0 the week before the big game to take over the top spot in the national polls. The Trojans began the year number seven, but quickly gained the top spot with wins over number four Texas and the team's first win in South Bend against Notre Dame since 1939, a span of 28 years. However, in the rain and mudded Corvallis, the Oregon State Beavers ended the dream of a USC undefeated season. The 67 big game began, however, on a sunny afternoon in front of a sellout crowd with the Trojans the designated home team in the shared stadium, even though both teams wore their home jerseys. Defense was the name of the game early on, the Bruins keying on junior All-American running back O.J. Simpson. The Trojans pressuring All-American quarterback Gary Beban. UCLA got the first first down of the game on the game's fifth series to Dave Nuttall. On the next play, Beban got crunched at the end of this run and sustained a nasty rib injury that would plague him physically for the rest of the afternoon. This only drive for either team in the first quarter was capped by a Greg Jones TD scamper to give UCLA the early lead. The last play of the first period was one Trojan fans would relish. Not all going out on the pass pattern along with Farmer and out in the flat. Oh, an interception, and it's touchdown, Southern California. Pat Cashman, there he goes. If there are no flags on the play, there are none. Pat Cashman, that pass, a dangerously thrown pass. UCLA coach Tommy Prothrow said he made the call, and he removed the play from his briefcase after the game, about three hours too late. Early second quarter, and the Trojans have to punt.
and a key defensive play made by O.J. Simpson. It not only saved a touchdown, but perhaps the game, as Bruins All-American kicker Zenon Andresishan began a very long afternoon going wide left. With that, it was time for Coach John McKay to pull one out of the depths of the playbook, much to the consternation of his counterpart, Mr. Prothrow. Earl McCullough on the end around. Recovered by Mike Scarpace. First down at the Bruin 28. SC quarterback Steve Soggy then tossed the only USC pass completion of the entire game, believe it or not, setting up one of the greatest runs this rivalry has ever seen. Steve Soggy. Simpson. There's his brilliance. 13 yards. Touchdown. I couldn't see any daylight, but he could. A lot of people think, including Tommy Prothrow, the UCLA coach at the time, the greatest run he ever saw was Simpson's 13-yard run up the middle, where five, six, seven uh, UCLA players had a shot at him. He kept on going to the goal line. I guess I can contribute it to good training at SC. We always had to run the bag, but it, throwing bags at your feet. And, uh, you know, uh, Furtick was always grabbing at the ball while, while you're running through all of these bags. And you, the key to the drill is to keep your knees in traffic going. I just turned up and tried to keep my legs churning and uh, get up real. And guys were coming at me. And I, I, I know I was going through a bunch of arms and legs. And all I can recall is that well, anyway, when a guy had wrapped on me, I was, I could dive into the end zone. I was, you know, I could see the end zone and I just kind of lunged into the end zone. The Trojans had the lead for the first time as UCLA went back to work. A long one from Biba to Nuttall with Bill Jaroncic saving a score. But Pat Cashman dragged Bieben down a play later, knocking him to the sidelines again. And Tony Terry and Ralph Oliver joined Bill Hayhoe in pressuring and tipping this Andresishan field goal try. The Trojans had seen a weakness in that Xenon's kicks were of a low trajectory and overloaded the right side of the line in order to get the block. It worked. 14-7 Trojans at the half. The lead didn't last very long into the second half, though, as the gutty Beban tied it up to George Farmer. Beban looking. Beban long to Copeland. Correction, Farmer. And UCLA is on the board. 53 yards. Late third quarter, Trojans forced to punt, and it's blocked. Beban back at it. But big six foot eight inch Bill Hayhoe nails Beban for a loss of 17. Some of the 80 yards and losses incurred by Beban on the day. And two plays later, it's Hero Hayho again, this time with a clean block of Andresishan's next attempt for three. All tied up after three quarters. The fourth quarter started out UCLA's way. First, a pick of Toby Page by Andy Herrera. And Beban knew exactly what to do with the opportunity. He finished off the drive with a scoring pass to Nuttall. And the point after, Andresishan overcompensates after so many misses and blocks, and leaves the door open for USC. Xenon kicked off to O.J. Simpson. Yeah. 
And two plays later, history. Well, we call a pass play. We come up to the line of scrimmage. And when we get to the line of scrimmage, uh, I hear red, which means it's an audible. Next play is hot. We have an audible on. Red, red, 23. And I'm, I almost had that feel in motion because I'm up there in the eye. I almost said, Toby, not only am I tired, that's a horrible call on third and eight. <laughs> I'm thinking in my mind. And, uh, but, you know, before I can even do anything or even think about it, the ball is snapped. They need three yards. First down and more. There's Simpson. Look at that cut. O.J. Simpson. That's all she wrote. 64 yards. 64 thrilling, captivating collegiate football yards. And let's look at that one again. So much of it is a blur. You, you'd wake up and he'd be in the end zone and you'd say, my God, what, what, what's going on? The place would be going crazy. Uh, third and eight would tend to be a passing play unless you have an O.J. Simpson in the backfield. Uh, so one, it's a great call, and, and uh, obviously it's a great run by a great running back. That's about a five-yard run. This guy turned it into something else. He, he went one of the greatest runs I have ever seen. Blocks by Mike Taylor and Steve Lamer, then Danny Scott, finally receivers Ron Drake, and the only man that could have caught O.J., Earl McCullough. Ricky Aldridge added the point after, and it was the Trojans' turn to cheer. Back to work for Mr. Beban and company against a Trojan team that had changed its defense to a 4-3 up front to put more pressure on the ailing quarterback. And it paid off. Beban sacked by Tony Terry and Jimmy Gunn, who played the second half with torn knee ligaments. Then Tim Rosovich and Gunn team up, and Prothrow opts for a third down and 24 quick kick. The Trojans missed a field goal short, but Gunn made sure the Bruins went nowhere. Trying to kill the clock, Page fumbles the snap, giving UCLA renewed hope with a minute to go. Miscommunication cost the Bruins on their first play as the clock ran. A completion to Farmer to the 43. Intentional grounding. Time for one more play. Gunn, Rosovich, and Bubba Scott. It was the first ever one point win for a McKay coach Trojan team. They had lost all five prior. The stats were very close, so was the game. Beban threw for 301 yards with the sore ribs. OJ, who played the entire game with a specially fitted shoe due to a bad foot injury, ran for 177 on 30 carries, 147 of them in the second half. In normal games, both these guys might not have been on the field at all. Beban won the Heisman, finishing his career with 4,000 passing yards and 35 rushing touchdowns. O.J. led his team to Pasadena and in front of over 103,000, a 14-3 win over Indiana to seal the national title up and route to his own Heisman Trophy the following year, an NCAA single season rushing record. And of course, O.J. had a stellar pro career. Beban, winner of the award for the most outstanding college player, played two years in the pros before a successful business career. The Trojans would go 29-2-2 over the three years, including 1967. The city championship, the conference title, the national championship. All in all, a pretty good day's work as USC beats UCLA 21 to 20 in the biggest of the big games, November the 18th, 1967.